Welcome back to Historical Context. Today we're continuing along our English Civil War unit and its effect on the colonies. Today we talk about Connecticut specifically. And when we talk about witchcraft in history, we're drawn to the events of Salem. But it's hard to believe that nearly 50 years prior to Salem, a witch hysteria broke out in Connecticut. Starting in 1647, the colony would execute at least 11 people after 37 trials. While less intense than the one-year Salem hysteria, the entire span of the witch trials in Connecticut would last 16 years. Today, we're going to explore its origins. And some of the origins of this movement may have come from England, where witchcraft was declared a capital crime in the year 1641. And the three-year career of Matthew Hopkins, an English witch hunter who had more people executed in his three years than the previous 100, was started in 1644. With English fervor against witchcraft escalating, it would make sense that one way or another, this would make its way over to the colonies. In Connecticut, the first evidence of this comes in December of 1642, when the general court establishes capital laws. Let's have a look. If any men, after legal conviction, shall have or worship any other god but the Lord God, he shall be put to death. If any man or woman be a witch, that is, hath or consult with a familiar spirit, they shall be put to death. If any person shall blasphemy the name of God, the Father, Son, or Holy Ghost, with direct, express, presumptuous, or high-handed blasphemy, or shall curse God in the like manner, he shall be put to death. So these were the first three capital laws in Connecticut. Other laws are passed imposing capital punishment for murder, poisoning, bestiality, premarital sex, adultery, rape, theft, bearing false witness, and rebellion. Now, 1643 are these capital laws. 1647 is when the witch trials start. You know... Why did nothing happen in between that time? So they passed these laws, these strict laws, but still nothing had happened. According to the general court notes in 1643, the Connecticut colony was still building its government presence. It was creating and filling new offices, bringing new people into government. And additionally, the colonists in the town of Wethersfield express concerns that seem related to their distance from the rest of the colony. Remember, the other two towns in the colony were very close together. They were across the river from one another, Windsor and Hartford. But Wethersfield was a little further away. In the fall of 1643, the colony sent a small group of men out to defend the Uncas in their war against another native tribe. Native tensions, you know, remain high in the area, and tensions with New Netherland were still there. In 1644, the law forbidding trade, which was passed in September of 1642, was repealed, possibly showing some easing tensions with the natives. On October 25th, 1644, a man by the name of Matthew Allen was recorded in the general court session having charged the Church of Hartford for wronging him. This is an interesting observation, con you know, considering this environment at the time and the possibility of the witchcraft hysteria. If you think about the witchcraft hysteria, nobody is going to be accusing a church of anything during that time. So, Still in 1644, things were quiet. Up to 1645, the court system in Connecticut, if you look at the documents, was dominated by petty lawsuits and the settling of estates. 
In February of that year, the government actually empowered magistrate judges in their respective towns to handle the smaller disputes. And you think that's that's logical because the state, if they're getting overwhelmed with this stuff, they could tell the smaller towns, hey, you guys can handle this. It's within your boundaries, within your jurisdictions. In the spring of 1645, more crimes related to behavior began coming before the court, ranging from blasphemy to rudeness. The court had an uptick in moral punishments that year. But in the official record, nothing of witchcraft pops up. It's really weird. Not even Al C. Young, the first person executed for witchcraft on May 26, 1647. The Connecticut record doesn't mention any of this. Just a few days before her execution, the general court did order a standing army be assembled and stationed throughout the colony, but there's no mention of what they're defending against. The execution of Alcee Young for witchcraft may have actually never been known had it not been for two people writing about it. John Winthrop, whose writing we've talked about extensively on this podcast, and a man by the name of Matthew Grant. In Winthrop's A History of New England, he writes, quote, One of Windsor arraigned and executed at Hartford for a witch. Matthew Grant was the town clerk for Windsor. He was also an ancestor to future general and president Ulysses S. Grant. He notes in his journal, quote, Alcee Young was hanged. One thing that may help explain this behavior was a flu epidemic had engulfed New England and beyond, killing natives, colonists, even the French in Canada and the Dutch in New Netherland. The most notable death from the epidemic was Reverend Thomas Hooker in July of 1647. It is hypothesized by some historians that Connecticut colonists blamed the flu on the presence of witchcraft and looked to capital punishment to remedy the situation. Either way, formal records do not exist to provide a concrete explanation as to why this started. The records of 1648 still show a business-as-usual mentality in Connecticut, with the colony raising money to build a fort and maintain a standing army, and this uh, continued settling of petty grievances between colonists. The only extraordinary item of 1648 came when, in October, a man named Peter Busaker told his church that he hoped to meet some of them in hell. Wow. He was sentenced to prison and to be severely whipped. But again, not being a witch. I just imagine this happening in Salem and thinking that would have been the end of somebody. And we will talk about Salem later. Yet once again, missing from the record was the fact that Mary Johnson was arrested for theft. Upon interrogation, she confesses to having familiarity with the devil. She also confesses to sexual immorality and murdering a child. Her execution is postponed to 1650 because she was pregnant at the time. The lack of reference in the formal Connecticut record explains maybe why the witch trials never became a major historical story or item or really is mentioned much in any historical book. It also makes it difficult to surmise why this happened. Historians to this day aren't sure how many people were actually executed during this Connecticut witch trials period. And personally, I'm mystified that a colony that would be most separated from church and state, maybe aside from Rhode Island or Maryland, would be executing people based on their spiritual decisions. Nonetheless, this event occurred, 
And while it doesn't appear to be an influence of the English Civil War itself, it occurs during this time, and it occurs after England itself had its own little witchcraft flare-up. Therefore, I think it deserves mention in the stories of American history. Next week, we're going to shift over to another obscure event that occurs during this time prior to concluding the series on the English Civil War, and that is about a failed colony. It wasn't English, wasn't French, wasn't Spanish, it wasn't Netherlands or Swede. This colony came from Ireland, and we'll talk about that next time on Historical Content.